Today I'm going to talk about saturation. Saturation is something that happens in electronic circuits and in other systems, and it's something we talk about, it's important, it's a thing we work with, but nobody ever really defines it. It's something we learn about through experience, which is a good thing, it's good to learn by experience, but for people coming into this technical industry from non-technical backgrounds, I think it helps to give things like this a definition. So when we think of saturation, we think of something uh, like something being full of water. So I have here a sponge and I have water being poured into it from a faucet. And as the water pours into it, it dutifully absorbs the water. But eventually it gets to a point where it can hold no more water and the water starts to come out as fast as I put water in. So the sponge reaches a state where increasing the amount of water going into the sponge no longer increases the amount of water being held by the sponge. The sponge is now saturated. Here's a circuit where saturation is important in electronics. It is a common emitter amplifier made with a bipolar junction transistor. It is an NPN transistor, so we expect the power supply to be more positive on the collector than on the emitter. So we have a 10 volt power supply plus 10 volts here, zero volts here. The transistor has an HFE of 10 which is the ratio of base current to collector current. So we expect the collector current to be 10 times the base current. In other words, if I have one milliamp flowing into the base, I expect 10 milliamps to flow into the collector. 1K collector resistor. So right now with no current into the base, I expect no current flowing through the collector. So no current is flowing through this resistor. The transistor is acting like an open switch. So with no current flowing through the collector resistor, how much voltage difference do I expect to have from here to here? Well, to have a voltage difference, I have to have resistance plus current. There is no current, so I can have no difference in the voltage. So the voltage here must be the same as the voltage here. So right now we have positive 10 volts on the collector. Now let's put in some base current. Let's put in 100 microamps. So that's going to be 0 0.1 milliamps flowing into the base. Now I expect 10 times that to flow into the collector. So I expect one milliamp into the collector. And that milliamp has to go through that resistor. So now I do have current plus resistance. So I expect there to be a difference in voltage. How much difference? Well, if you don't know your voltage, you multiply. So one one thousandth times one thousand is one. So I will have a one volt difference across this resistor. I expect my voltage to be higher where the current is going in than where the current is coming out. So I have a higher voltage here, a lower voltage here. So I start with 10 volts, I lose one volt, and now I have only nine volts. So notice as I increase my base current, my collector voltage goes down. My collector current increases, but the more current I have flowing into the collector, the greater voltage I have across this resistor. This voltage can't change because it's tied to the power supply through a very low impedance. As the voltage difference increases across this resistor, this voltage can't change, so this one must change, and this voltage must be lower than that voltage. So as I increase my base current, this voltage will go down. Let's increase that to 0.2 milliamps. That's going to give me two milliamps. So I've doubled the amount of current through the resistor. That's going to double the voltage. So now there's two volts from here to here. Start with 10 volts, lose two volts. Now I'm down to eight volts. So notice as I increase my base current, my collector current increases and pulls this voltage down. So the more collector current I have, the lower this voltage. Now let's increase this all the way up to one milliamp. Now I expect the current here to be 10 milliamps. So with 10 milliamps and 1K, Ohm's law tells us multiply 1000 by uh, 10 by 0 0.01, and we expect to have 10 volts across there. Once again, this voltage can't change. This voltage must be lower. So we start with 10 volts, we lose 10 volts, and so here we now have zero volts. Now what happens if I increase my base current? Can I do that? Sure, let's make that 1.1 milliamps. That's going to increase this up to 11 milliamps. 
Now I have 11 milliamps going through a 1K resistor. That's going to give me 11 volts across that resistor. So I start with 10 volts, lose 11. So what do I have here? Negative 1 volt. Except I can't, because I can't have a voltage that I don't have in the power supply. I'm measuring my voltages with my black lead anchored at the ground, which is the way we do it. So by definition, this is zero volts. It's the lowest voltage in the circuit. That's why we uh, made that our ground. It's a logical place to make ground in this case. So essentially what we have is a battery over here, connected there and connected there. And this is the lowest possible voltage. We've put our black lead there. By putting our black lead there, that makes it zero volts. Remember, zero volts is wherever we put the black lead and we can't get any lower. So that cannot go lower than zero volts. So my collector voltage is zero volts. So I increased my base current, I increased the input, but all this cannot happen. The transistor is trying to pull 11 milliamps through there. Remember the little green man model of the transistor. If I have a little green man controlling the resistance of it, his instructions are to make this current 10 times that current. He's dropped that resistance all the way to nothing. He can't get what he doesn't have. He says, sorry boss, I'm giving it all I have. I cannot get more than 10 milliamps through here. And so now that is that point. So if I increase this base current, the collector current can no longer increase. So increasing the input at this point no longer changes the circuit. And that is the definition of saturation in electronics. When increasing the input no longer causes a change in the circuit, the circuit has reached saturation. So if we are at one milliamp and below, so if we are less than one milliamp, the base current, this will be less than 10 milliamps and the circuit is not saturated. We can move the base current up and down and that changes the collector current. But as soon as I try to go above one milliamp, increasing that current will not cause a change in the circuit. Therefore, we've reached saturation. Now, I don't want to say that the transistor is saturated because it's the whole circuit that's saturated. I can change this resistor and change the saturation current or the base current that causes saturation. So let's say we make this 500 ohms Now, let's remove some of this clutter and now I'm going to put that one milliamp into the base. I expect 10 times that up here, so we expect 10 milliamps. And with 500 ohms, we only expect to have five volts across here. So 10 milliamps going through 500 ohms gives us a difference of 5 volts. That means this will stay 10 volts. This voltage must be lower. So we start with 10, we lose 5, and we have. So we are well above the 0 volts here. So if I change that collector resistor, I can go all the way up to 2 milliamps here before this reaches 10 volts, and now we are in saturation. So it's the whole circuit that saturates, not just the transistor. And so the saturation point is determined by the HFE of the transistor and the collector resistor. Now by reducing the value of this resistor, I have reduced the gain of the circuit. So it's a trade-off. However, the definition is that saturation is reached when increasing my base current or increasing my input no longer causes a change in the circuit. Now I've lied a little bit about these voltages because there are some things about a transistor I'm assuming aren't there, which we're going to talk about now. And that is that I really cannot reach zero volts on my collector. Because of the nature of a bipolar junction transistor, when I hit saturation, there is a minimum voltage I can get here. And it's not always this voltage, but if you look at the uh, data sheets for a lot of transistors, you'll find that the saturation collector voltage, which is called VCE sat, that's a parenthesis there, or a parenthesis. So we have VCE sat, that's the specification for what our collector voltage is when, this, uh, when the transistor is in saturation. And typically we see that that is roughly around 0.4 volts, at least 
most of the transistors I've looked at. Not always, but very commonly. And so I increased the base current, and this goes down to a minimum of, and that's as far as it will go. So if I put this up to about, oh, 2 milliamps will be our saturation current here. Uh, let's make that 2 milliamps because it'll actually saturate just a little bit before that because of the fact we can't get all the way down to zero volts here. And so now we have a more realistic uh, situation where this has gone down to 0.4 volts and now increasing this current will no longer cause a change in the circuit. And another thing to look at is what's the voltage right here? Um, now we expect the base voltage to be about 7 tenths of a volt higher than the emitter voltage. But that's a typical voltage in the real world, especially when we get saturated, that can be higher. So once we get into saturation, this base to emitter voltage, the VBE, can go well above that 0.7 volts. And if we are deep into saturation, we might see as much as 0 0.8 volts, even higher. I've seen power transistors where the base to emitter voltage in saturation could get as high as 7 volts. It depends on the particular transistor. And I've seen some small signal transistors where this can get up to around 3 volts. So the base to emitter voltage can be, when we're in saturation, uh, who knows, maybe as much as 3 volts or higher. So this can fool people who are not really experienced with circuits. They are having trouble with something and they see, oh, three volts base to emitter. I can't have more than about seven tenths of a volt there. I must have a bad transistor. Be careful about that. If you see a high base to emitter voltage, don't automatically think the transistor is bad because it's higher than seven tenths of a volt. Look at your collector voltage. Ah, high base to emitter voltage. My collector voltage is as low as it'll go. That transistor's in saturation. That looks perfectly normal for a saturated transistor, so don't be fooled by that. Now, if I see a high base to emitter voltage and this voltage is something higher, like especially if I see that that is at 10 volts, hmm, with that kind of base to emitter voltage, this should be deep into saturation. Obviously, it's not because that's as high as it'll go. It looks to me like that transistor is now an open circuit, and this would be a bad transistor. So don't just assume that because this voltage is higher than the typical 7 tenths of a volt of a silicon transistor that the transistor is bad. It could simply be in saturation. Now you might ask, well, is there an opposite to saturation? And of course there is. That is called cutoff. In our circuits such as this common emitter amplifier, we have an important point that's called cutoff because it's not quite as straightforward as we might think. So here is our circuit, and as I said before, if I have no current going into the base, I have no current, there are 10 volts there, going through the collector. So with no current going into the collector, there's no current through this resistor, there's no voltage across it, so that's going to be plus 10 volts. Except that can't happen because of the nature of bipolar junction transistors because of what's called quantum noise, it's just random movement of electrons, even with no input, I'm going to get a very tiny collector current. And that is called the cutoff current. So if I have no base current, I have a tiny collector current. So there's a certain base current that if I go down below that, let's say that's uh, maybe two microamps. So if I go above two microamps, I start increasing my current and I have things happen. But if I go below 2 microamps, going any lower cannot cause a decrease in the current because I've reached my cutoff current. And because of the nature of the transistor, I will always have just a little tiny bit of probably nanoamps of current and just a tiny, tiny bit of voltage here. I don't know how much it depends on uh, the resistor. So we have a cutoff voltage here and a cutoff current that is the lowest possible current in the system. So saturation is the point where increasing the input no longer causes a change in the system, and cutoff is a point where decreasing the input no longer causes a change in the circuit. So that is saturation and cutoff. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. 
If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.